statement of fact number 16. All patients received frequent expensive treatments that had no recognized scientific evidence of any validity on almost a daily basis without any evidence of sustained improvement. Again, a blatant lie because it's all stated in the chart that they have reviewed, that their expert reviewed a thousand pages in less than two hours. But of course, they're not going by any of our experts and they're not going by the facts in the charts. I bet that these bastards try to even change the charts. The charts are there, they've been documented, they've been recorded, that everything has been done. You look at the facts for yourself. Patients A, B, and C presented to Dr. Buttar's office on a daily basis, Monday through Friday, for treatments. That is true. The patients would spend hours each day receiving intravenous administrations and other therapies that had no proven effect on their cancer. That's the reason that these patients, I suppose, lived for a longer time because hospice, their referral to hospice and their, refer and their chemotherapy and, and um, ra radiation therapy or whatever treatments that they had prior to coming to us, all of a sudden magically kicked in after they presented to us and started making them feel better, although after they'd gotten those treatments, they were going downhill. So I guess that's the reason that they can make a stupid statement like this. The patients would spend hours each day, um, many times would be charged over $1,000 per day for the treatments. These treatments would go on for weeks. That is true. The treatments cost a lot of money. Some of these treatments, the patients were getting five or six IV treatments. They have dives. We have staff to pay for. And of course, our treatments cost less than the conventional side of the house. And more patients have been seeking our types of treatments than the conventional types of treatments, which now reduces the profit margin for the medical society and the doctors within the medical society so we're a threat to their financial uh, gain and so what do they do they stimulate the medical board to bring charges against doctors of integrative medicine like myself and many other doctors throughout the country i'm not the only one like this there's all sorts of other doctors the only problem is that the other doctors get so scared they sign consent orders agreeing that they did something wrong that they didn't do on a lesser degree and then the medical board slaps their wrists, reports them as a bad doctor and they've got their NATO ranking, they've got their prosecution and they go on to the next doctor. Well, I refuse to do that. I refuse to let these bastards manipulate me and intimidate me because as some of you already know, the medical board, the one thing they can't do, well, they might try to do it. And if they do do this, you see, once you've taken live fire, something like the medical board doesn't really intimidate you. I've been shot at before while serving my country. Now, these bastards want to try to intimidate me, go right ahead and try to intimidate me. I know you can't kill me, but if something does happen to me, then you guys know why it happened, because they can't afford to have somebody with a big mouth and knows what they're talking about come against them. Everything's been documented in DVDs. Everything's available out there. Everything will be secured for posterity if ever anything negative were to happen to me. Am I saying something negative is going to happen to me? No, that's not what I'm saying. But I am saying that I am a threat, and I'm a big threat to these people, and I'm going to become a bigger threat to the hierarchy as this becomes more and more prevalent. So do yourself a favor and look at this information and get, reach the decision yourself because this is important information that's going to affect you and, more importantly, your future generations, your children. So look at this information because your life may depend on it. Your children's lives may, de may depend on it. Number 17, statement of fact. Dr. Buttar testified that he does not treat cancer. What I testify to is that I treat the patient. I don't treat cancer. Cancer is a symptom. I treat the patient. I treat the patient's condition. And the patient's condition is either toxicity and or an immune suppression or usually both. And that's what I'm treating. I treat the patient and I address their metal toxicity. I treat the, uh, address their persistent organic pollutant toxicity, their energetic toxicity, whether they've been exposed to electromagnetic radiation fields and it's all these different types of things that they've been exposed to. There are seven toxicities that we specifically address address. We look at those toxicities, we address those toxicities, and then we stimulate their immune system. We help to reconfigure their systems so that we re-stimulate their immune system using immune modulating techniques. That's what we do. This thing, Dr. Bittar testified he does not treat cancer. That's true. I did say that. I don't treat cancer. I treat the patient, and I address the immune system, and I address toxicity. That's how I address the needs of my patients that have cancer, heart disease, stroke, autism, every pathology that we deal with, that is the same philosophy. We treat the patient. We do not treat the symptom. However, the evidence showed that Dr. Bittar held himself out as a physician who treated cancer and that he sponsored numerous seminars to teach other physicians his method of treating cancer. We have had nine seminars uh, that have been used to train doctors how to address all chronic disease, not only cancer, but heart disease, stroke, essentially neurodegenerative disease. In fact, why is it that if we know so much about medicine that eight out of 10 deaths in the industrialized world are either due to heart disease or cancer? Eight out of 10. 
That means you take all homicide, all suicide, all trauma, all natural disasters, all the volcanoes and the eruptions and the earthquakes and the tsunamis, you take all that stuff, all the wars, all other disease processes, you combine them all together, they only represent two out of 10 deaths. Everything else, eight out of 10 is either cancer or heart disease. If you add neurodegenerative to it, neurodegenerative disease to it, then you've got 9.2 out of every 10 deaths a result of either heart disease, cancer, or neurodegenerative disease. Only 0.8 less than one out of ten is actually dying, a person is actually dying on this planet from any of those other things that I mentioned. Why is it that if we know so much about science that so many people are dying of these things? We never hear about this in the media. We don't, we hear about the person that got shot, the car wreck and the, the bus going off the cliff, but we never hear about how many hundreds of thousands of people died for can, from cancer or heart disease. The media doesn't want you to know this stuff. Why? Because it doesn't serve the purpose of the medical hierarchy that's poisoning us continuously with crap that wasn't meant to be in our system. We were not born with a shortage of thimerosal in our bodies. We were not born with a shortage of medications in our bodies. God God designed our bodies to work in a certain way. When there's a symptom, that symptom should be addressed by looking at the underlying fundamental cause that causes the problem, not by covering up the symptom. If you have a pile of manure on the floor right now and I throw a carpet over that pile of manure, does that get rid of the manure? It's still going to stink and it's still going to be there. The only way to get rid of that manure is to pick it up and get it out. That's the only way. But our modern medicine system deals with taking that carpet and throwing it over that, that pile of manure over and over and over again using drugs to mask the symptoms. That's the problem with our system and that's the reason that this medical board as well as other medical boards throughout the country are coming after other doctors that are no longer willing to or, or, or able to look at themselves by playing along with this facade that's been created which is costing hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people their lives. It's absolutely not tolerable to many of us. And the ones that will not tolerate it anymore are either speaking out like I'm speaking out or they're leaving medicine. In history, no, no, at no other time has the healing profession left in such mass exodus from its, own, um, from its own profession because people, doctors are just absolutely disgusted with what's going on. And they don't know what else to do. So doctors are going into different types of professions just so that they can live with themselves and, and not, feel, not feel like they're a terrible person. This is preposterous that what, what's happening. And slowly and slowly the human system, the human freedom is being strangled and suffocated and being buried by the interests of, the, of Big Pharma, of the drug cartels. You could say that I'm prone to conspiracy theory. I'm not prone to conspiracy theory. I'm just simply looking at the facts. And anybody who opens their eyes and looks at the facts, they can see simple little evidence of what I've just stated. Why is it that when I graduated from medical school 18 years ago, anybody that had a cholesterol of 250 or lower was considered to be fine. And now it's 150, the cholesterol level is 150, and that's when they say that, no, it's too high and you need to start on medication. So if you have 160 or 180 or 200, which used to be fine before, is now considered to be high cholesterol. It's considered, considered to be hyperlipidemia and a person should be started on statin drugs. And the information on statin drugs, I mean, I don't want to go into a diatribe about, about all the specifics, but statin drugs, they've been shown already that the statin drugs actually deplete a substance called ubiquinone, coenzyme Q10, in our bodies. And the studies show that they must be, the statin drugs must be given in conjunction with coenzyme Q10. However, due to the expense of coenzyme 10, that information was left off the studies, and the drug-promoting cartel just started to put out all these statin drugs, knowing full well that they were depleting ubiquinone, which is essential for the mitochondria and the cells to work. And the side effects... And not only, we're not, not even talking about liver cancers, the hepatocellular cancer nomas that are caused by this, but all the other side effects that are caused by being on these statin drugs, they're considered to be normal. Look at it, just look at any ad that you see on TV, any ad for a drug uh, company, any pharmaceutical ad. Ten years ago, the pharmaceutical companies didn't advertise to the general public. They only talked to the doctors. Now what's happening? They're telling patients to go and ask the doctor for certain drugs. And listen to the little information in the background. You see these people jumping around and frolicking on the beach. And as the narrator talks about the side effects of, uh, of bleeding and this disorder and that disorder and possibly even death. I mean, what kind, of a, what kind of a substance are you putting in your body if the side effects can kill you? And people are being inundated with this, so they start thinking it's normal. They think this is everyday information. They think it's totally safe. The government would have put, wouldn't put it out if it was safe for us. If it was unsafe, they wouldn't tell us that it's okay to do it. They would, the government's going to protect us. 
After all, the government tells us that we don't have to worry about things like mercury, although crazy doctors are saying that they should stay away from mercury, but the government says that there's nothing wrong with it. Now look at what the FDA had to do. Just a few months ago, the FDA had to change everything about their 